Hey, Benny Fash, 27th of April, 2020. I do pray you're all well. I sincerely do. I was looking at Revelation 6 again, and this is where I'm being led. And I have a plethora of things that are just adding up to everything. I mean everything, but particularly the pale horse is really being revealed. And, you know, basically it's coming. This is all coming, and I don't know exactly how it unfolds and exactly how the pieces all fit together, but I do know it's coming. But what I was compelled to share today was a reminder or an introduction to people. When you know what the plan is of these wicked ones that we can now plainly see, their intentions are not good for the common folk. Things won't go back to truly normal until we have a vaccine that we've gotten out to basically the entire world. They intend to eliminate you. It's all written in the word of God. This is something that believers expect and anticipate, albeit a very bitter, sweet situation. You understand? But nonetheless, you need to know what your government or your gray state, your deep state, however you want to describe it, they're all just Luciferians and what they've had planned for the United States in particular for a long time. I'm going to share these things with you because they have predictively programmed this into you since television was invented. And let's not forget, we have the Beltane upon us, May Day blood ritual sacrifice is required in their world this isn't to scare you this is literally to show you what is planned for you a new world order and if you are not on the foundation of jesus christ you will be deceived and you will die in your sin and you don't want that to happen call on the name of jesus ask for the truth open the bible Start reading with a sincere and humble heart. I'm just telling you, time is really short, folks, because this pale horse is fixing to ride. Share it with those who you think can handle it, because this is what's coming. Because I'm a dangerous man, because I know too much about the truth. Now that uh, end of the world apocalyptic garbage, are you familiar with what the Federal Emergency Management Agency's real power is? FEMA allows the White House to suspend constitutional government upon declaration of a national emergency. FEMA allows the White House to suspend constitutional government upon declaration of a national emergency. Today I am officially declaring a national emergency. I am officially declaring a national emergency. Think about that. They told us it was biological warfare or a virus. What killed those men? What killed them I won't even write about. A silent weapon for a quiet war. A silent weapon for a quiet war. A silent weapon for a quiet war. They've been working on this for 50 years. And these men have been secretly negotiating a planned Armageddon. Negotiating with whom? I think you know. I think you know. The timetable has been set. The president will declare a state of emergency at which time all government, all federal agencies will come under the power the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA. Today I am officially declaring a national emergency. They call me paranoid. We're going to find out along with the rest of the country. All U.S. states have now been placed under a federal disaster declaration in a record first for the country. President Trump likened the pandemic to the plague during an Easter message. Right now, we're keeping separation. We're getting rid of the plague. It's a plague on our country like nobody's ever seen. But we're winning the battle. We're winning the war. We have a lot to be thankful for. Happy Easter, everybody. March 26th, President Trump approves federal emergency aid for the state of Illinois. James Joseph, FEMA's Regional 5 administrator, moves into action. Actually, uh, writing some new 
uh, some new policies along the way, uh, writing some new uh, some new policies along the way. We're going to connect the dots for anybody who has ears to hear. Some people are going to want to dispute this, but we're not going to argue with anyone. This is what's going on. They have been leading you down a path of lies, all to hide the truth. FEMA has more power than the President of the United States or the Congress. It has the power to suspend laws, move entire populations, arrest and detain citizens without a warrant, and hold them without trial. Now we need to go and look in families to find those people who may be sick and remove them and isolate them in a, in a safe and dignified manner. It can seize property, food supplies, transportation systems, and can suspend the Constitution. <laughs> We're in a live exercise. When a state of emergency is declared, Executive Order 11921 allows the Federal Emergency Preparedness Agency to develop plans to establish control over the mechanisms of production and distribution of energy sources, wages, salaries, credit, and the flow of money in the U.S. financial institution in any undefined national emergency. It also provides that when a state of emergency is declared by the President, Congress cannot review this action for six months. After Trump signed the National Emergency Declaration, FEMA took over. Now, this is March 13th, 2020. Listen to what he's going to say now. This is right after he signed the National Emergency into effect. It is only the beginning of what we're really doing, and now we're in a different phase. This is only the beginning of what we're really doing, because what they're really doing is putting everything in place to start the new world order. Now we're in a different phase. The different phase that he's speaking of is that he has given full power over to FEMA when he signed the National Emergency Declaration. We had some very old and obsolete rules. Old and obsolete rules. Those old and obsolete rules are also known as the Constitution of the United States. That we had to live with it worked under certain circumstances but not under mass circumstances but not under mass circumstances under mass circumstances is being under fema rule they were there for a long time they were in place for a long time and we're breaking them down now we're breaking them down now they're definitely breaking them down because the constitution is suspended and they're very usable for certain instances but not for this not for this because they can't go forward with their plan with the Constitution, our constitutional rights still intact. To unleash the full power of the federal government. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. It's officially telling us in a coded message that we are now under the rule of FEMA. Fast forward to March 19th, 2020, in the FEMA National Response Coordination Center. Well, Mr. President, Vice President, thank you for, for being here. Really appreciate your visit uh, to FEMA. I think uh, your visit really, uh, as you indicated last week, uh, by signing the national emergency, uh, has really empowered FEMA, has really empowered FEMA, has really empowered FEMA, has really empowered FEMA. We've got to be very strong, very, very smart, and we've got to come together, not only as a nation, but as a world community. Blessed be our new founding fathers and America, a nation reborn. May God be with you all. Somebody didn't want the gray state investigated, explored, and unveiled. That's why David Crowley is dead. He was the writer and director of one of the most controversial movies in modern history. And somebody didn't want him to produce it. What was so threatening about David Crowley and the Grey State concept? What was so dangerous about Grey State? David Crowley claimed that his movie was based on real events. Not Hollywood propaganda, 
like you see in movies such as 2012. California is going down! God, you sound like a crazy person. The governor just said we're fine now. The guy's an actor. He's reading a script. I am officially declaring a national emergency. So the gray state is essentially an artistic representation of real aspects put into a fictional format. Once you uh, open your eyes and start looking at, at all these trends like RFID, like martial law, like FEMA, like executive orders, you have to act within your own capacity to sort of, uh, you know, talk about this. They don't want Americans, Canadians, and other Western countries to know what is coming. And that is a plan to intentionally collapse Western society. Intentionally collapse Western society. Gray State was simply too threatening. It revealed too much, not just the obvious points of what could happen with the collapse of a society, things like martial law, food shortages, and a provisional government. It goes beyond this. What was David's hidden message inside the gray state? And could it be the reason for his death? Perhaps the scariest part of gray state's conceptual trailer is this character here, who appears to be operating a guillotine. David Crowley was very intentional in this frame of the movie. Who is the identity of this executioner? If you look closely, you will see that this terrifying character is wearing something around his waist. An apron. I do believe David Crowley is trying to tell us something. This matters going forward. We're in a we're in a live exercise here to get this right. No, we're in a live exercise here to get this right. Does he sound like a man that's in control of anything anymore? You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. He he just looks like he has just lost his best friend. I'm sure most of us thought that FEMA was created to help people in disasters, but here's the truth about FEMA. FEMA was created in a series of executive orders. A presidential executive order, whether constitutional or not, becomes law simply by its publication in the Federal Registry. Congress is bypassed. Executive Order 12148 created the Federal Emergency Management Agency, that is to interface with the Department of Defense for civil defense planning and funding. An emergency czar was appointed. Executive Order 12656 appointed the National Security Council as the principal body that should consider emergency powers. This allows the government to increase domestic intelligence and surveillance of U.S. citizens and would restrict the freedom of movement within the United States and grant the government the right to isolate large groups of civilians. That's where we're at right now, people. We are all being told what to do, where we can and can't go. The National Guard could be federalized to seal all borders and take control of U.S. airspace and all ports of entry. Executive Order 10990 allows the government to take over all modes of transportation and control of highways and seaports. Executive Order 10995 allows the government to seize and control the communications media. Executive Order 10997 allows the government to take over all electrical power, gas, petroleum, fuels, and minerals. Executive Order 10998 allows the government to take over all food resources and farms. A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Executive Order 11000 allows the government to mobilize civilians into work brigades under government supervision. Executive Order 11001 allows the government to take over all health, education, and welfare functions. Executive Order 11002 designates the Postmaster General to operate a national registration of all persons. That's where your census comes in. Executive Order 11003 allows the government to take over all airports and aircraft, including commercial aircraft. 
Executive Order 11004 allows the Housing and Finance Authority to relocate communities, build new housing with public funds, designate areas to be abandoned, and establish new locations for populations. Santa Anita Racetrack, for example, suddenly became a community of about 17,000 persons. The Army provided housing. Executive Order 11005 allows the government to take over railroads, inland waterways, and public storage facilities. Executive Order 11051 specifies the responsibility of the Office of Emergency Planning and gives authorization to put all executive orders into effect in times of increased international tensions and economic or financial crisis. Executive Order 11310 grants authority to the Department of Justice to enforce the plans set out in executive orders to institute industrial support, to establish judicial and legislative liaison, to control all aliens, to operate penal and correctional institutions. Who is the identity of this executioner? They call me paranoid. We're going to find out along with the rest of the country. And Executive Order 11049 assigns emergency preparedness function to federal departments and agencies consolidating 21 operative executive orders issued over a 15-year period. Santa Anita Racetrack, for example, suddenly became a community of about 17,000 persons. The Army provided housing and plenty of healthful, nourishing food for all. After a few months, Detainees were transferred to 10 long-term camps across the country. These were in remote areas on unused desert or swampland. At each relocation center, evacuees were met by an advanced contingent of Japanese who had arrived some days earlier and who now acted as guides. Officially, they were called relocation centers two-thirds of those incarcerated were U.S. citizens, and there were no hearings or trials held to determine if they did anything wrong or were dangerous. And there were no hearings or trials held to determine if they did anything wrong or were dangerous. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause, Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. If we were facing an alien threat, is not an alien force already among us? To achieve the universal aspirations of mankind, peace and security, freedom and the rule of law, such is a world worthy of our struggle and worthy of our children's future. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, 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 a new world order. A world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order. Satan's rebellion has already failed, but he's going to take as many as he can with him into the pits of hell. So stand firm on the rock of Jesus Christ. Peace and grace to all of you. Many fish. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, 